Guatemala and Central America as a region has a tremendous potential to be uh, self-reliant in energy uh, supply and consumption and also have some surplus to be sold uh, the international market. In a way, Central America will never uh, get industrialized. Mm -hmm. That train is gone. So if we want an industry, you know, our region should be energy. And energy should be renewable, because like Guatemala, we have 10,000 megawatts of hydro potential, and we're using less than 7% of that. Uh, the same with goes with geothermal, wind. Uh, we, wind, we have 7,000 megawatts of uh, capacity, potential capacity, and we're using zero percent. Mm -hmm. So you see there is a lot, a myriad of opportunities. Uh, what is lacking is basically a long-term comprehensive national policy that looks at autarky and self-reliant uh, uh, in terms of energy, and also the vision that the only industry that it's capable of generation surplus for the international market is the industry, the energy industry, is not being really internalized by decision makers or politicians at this level in the country. Well, I think as through policy dialogue and institutional reform, I mean, you have to believe in the systems, in democracy. Democracy requires participation, requires that the constituency put their ideas together, that we establish dialogues. One of the problems that we have with Central American politicians and Guatemalan politicians is that they don't know the difference between policy and politics. Mm -hmm. They think that politics is policy. And policy has to deal with the long-term view of the country. It's a comprehensive view of the long-term uh, commitment to development or to whatever. And politics is how these different stakeholders deal with this vision and this uh, path. And uh, since in Spanish we don't have the two words, policy and policy, it's only politica, uh, they don't really understand and get it. And once that differentiation is, is, is done, then you can have a long-term view and certain arrangements between the stakeholders to achieve that long-term view. The climate change conversation is over for us. I mean, we are living extreme climate viability. And that means very dry seasons, and when it rains, it rains really hard, and it's destroying the infrastructure, the fields, and the food supply. So people are already adapting, despite of what the international community wants to say about it. So in this adaptation process, uh, the idea is to create resilience so we can support these stream changes. For that, we have high-tech Western-created technology, which is very good. But also we have traditional knowledge of these Mayan indigenous communities or any community in traditional Nepal, Aztecs, in Amazonia or wherever you go. So the whole idea is to enhance the toolbox that you have to cope with changes and rapid changes. So we're going to have all this high tech here that can be very useful and is very useful, but also this knowledge of medicinal plants, of dyeing products, on how to use uh, the, the biodiversity that is there to, to, to pest control and to soil conservation and so on and so forth. So this whole idea is not to say that this traditional knowledge is better idealized Mayan uh, knowledge vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, me metaphysical thinkings from the West is just have them both so in case the problems are so big that we need to draw from different tools to solve the problems that we're going to be living. So it's basically rescuing na a traditional knowledge and scaling up that knowledge so you can see it and learn it, not only us as uh, foreigners, but also the people in, in extense community and make the high-tech solutions more robust and simple so you create this blending of technologies that can be uh, more applicable for developing countries uh, uh, settings. It's basically you have, for example, a small hydro facility that it's being built and produced in the country. Everything, the engineering, the studies, the machinery, the pipes, uh, the labor, uh, the most simple labor that is in, in the communities over there. One is operating, you have the creation of uh, uh, jobs that didn't exist before. You know, the accountant, the manager, the electrician, and so on and so forth. Then you have the productive uses of that in, in energy using the local knowledge and biodiversity, the textiles that women are doing, but then using a sewing machine that so the products are different and more trendy, that they can be marketed elsewhere. So you rescue and use that knowledge and that uh, 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 wisdom, and you project that to markets to create jobs and create wealth. So it's not about poverty, it's about creating wealth. So using 
the productive uses of energy, and that in this case is renewable energy. So that's a way to do it. It's not really very complicated.